read the whole chapter 9 of Hebrews. But I want to um, start with verse 18. This is one of those chapters that's really hard to pick out or where to start. Or just because the whole chapter is really good, but we're trying to be haste here, but not too too big of a hurry, but just to, I want to get out some points here. And 18 says, there, Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath endured unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. I notice we've um, sung a lot about the blood tonight. You know, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I want to talk about the blood of Jesus tonight and about the significance of the scripture about how without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Um, so let's look over here to, uh, let's jump back to Exodus. There is so many good scriptures of this. This one was one of those where you don't know what scripture to start with, which one to end with. It was, uh, let's go to 24 to try to tie it all together because it was, I started digging into this and I thought this, from the Old Testament sacrifices to Christ's redemption on the cross to where, I mean, it's just... Um, that's verse 7 in chapter 24 of Exodus. And he took the book of the covenant and read into the, in, in the audience of the people. And they said, All that the Lord had said will, be, will, will, will we do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. <clears throat> That's the same uh, para- kind of reference in there in Hebrew that I, that I was reading. Uh, if you want to turn over to Exodus, we're going to stay in there, chapter 12. This part here is the was the kind of the, the the scriptures that really gripped me whenever I was studying. It's in verse five in chapter twelve. It says, "Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male over the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep." Or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And you shall take of the blood, and you shall strike it on two side posts, and on the uh, upper door post of the houses wherein you shall eat it. And they shall eat in the uh, eat the flesh in the night, roast with flat fire, and unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs you shall eat it. And then verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague should not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Israel, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial that you keep it. A feast to the Lord there, uh, thereout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by ordinance forever. And where it says, "Ye 
marking the doorpost with the blood of your heart. And the part that I, the Lord kind of revealed to me, he said, and he talks about in here as well, he told the, the children of Israel to stay in the house, do not come out when the, when the angel of death comes out. And if you come out, you'll be dead. But as long as you stay behind the blood, you're protected. And I look out as us as Christians, if we stay behind the blood of Jesus, we're protected. The Lord will protect us because we're in that covenant. We're in the New Testament of the blood of Christ. He will protect us and keep us from harm. But, but as long as we, if we decide we're going to be outside that covenant, step outside the door, we're outside his protection, outside of his covering, outside of, of, of his covenant. And if any of the children of Israel during that time would have left, you know, I'm, I'm bored, I'm going to go, and, you know, the angel of death would have wiped them out, but they saw, they saw the blood. But it's funny, it was, it was not, not funny, haha, but funny, interesting, that the blood was over the top and the sides, but not the bottom, where you wouldn't trample the blood. But it was over where it was, you would pass through the blood going out, and is a, is a covering and a protection of you. Matthew chapter 26. Well, hold on. Let's, I'm going to stay back here in Leviticus. Save you from doing a, from your thumbs cramping and being tired from all the turning. <clears throat> Having a little fun tonight. I think Christians ought to have more fun than the world. I was there once, and I know the comparisons. It's a lot funner serving the Lord than it is uh, being out there in death. Um, Leviticus 17 and 11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. So it talks about here that there's life in the blood. That's why that song is so powerful. It says there's a power in the blood because there is life in the blood of Christ that covers us. Okay, now we can turn to Matthew. Because remember, there's... Without the shedding of blood, blood, there's no remission. Remission of what? Remission of your sins. That cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Matthew 26 and 28, Jesus says, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which was shed for many for the remission of sins. And this is before the crucifixion, but he's foretelling what hit the purpose of the, of the crucifixion was, of why he had to shed his blood. He says, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Um, Ephesians chapter 2. start with verse uh, 12, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Jesus Christ, ye who were sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. And that is so awesome. Um, Ephesians chapter 1. Thank you, 
these are just some of the, the qualities of having, of being with the blood of Christ, what it does. Redemption, in whom we have, in verse 7, chapter 1, in whom we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. First um, John. Chapter one. In verse seven, it says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with the, with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. It cleanses us. It redeems us. And um, Colossians chapter 1. verse 14, it talks about here again, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. And in by him are all things created that are in heaven and in our earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn of, from the dead, that in all things he might have permission. Uh, prim, thank you. It is, for it pleased the Father that in him shall all fullness dwell. Amen. And having made peace, through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him. I say whether they be on things in earth or in things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unimprovable in his sight. Hallelujah. And so that all because of the shed blood of Christ he has given. Um, Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 1. Hallelujah. Let's start with verse 19. And having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. But let us draw near with the true heart in full, full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an even evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water that let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that is consider, that is promised so we can have um, through the blood of Christ we have a full assurance of faith that having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies are, bodies are washed with the warm water of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I got one more, Revelations 1 and 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, 
and has washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen. And I thank, thank the Father tonight for, for everything that his blood offers. You, <clears throat> Redemption through his blood it cleanses us, full assurance of faith, no evil conscience, washes us from sins. Um, and I, I wrote down there in the Exodus that when I was reading that, I said, stay behind the blood or die. Which is kind of bold to say, but that was stay in Christ, stay behind the blood of Christ with the relationship and the covenant we have with him. Um, amen. Does anyone desire prayer tonight for anything? <clears throat> 